blowouts and touchdowns. That's right, everybody. It's another football episode of Tap Outs and Touchdowns. And as always, it's your guy, Bully Rye, back at it again with my guy, Banker Bill. Bill, what's up, bud? What's happening, man? Uh, we're, we're This is weird. We're not live, but we'll be on tomorrow. Yeah, this is not a live episode. It's the first time in a while that we've pre-recorded a football episode. Um, but uh, I've got company coming in town. A. a. Ronnie's been on the show. Uh, is coming into town for the night on Wednesday night, so I figured I, I probably not a bad idea to sort of give him my attention, and uh, and so this is pre-recorded, but this will go live Wednesday night on YouTube and Facebook. We will not be live on Instagram this week as a result. Uh, but welcome to a pre-recorded episode of Tap Outs and Touchdowns Football Edition, and uh, I think we should go ahead and get into it, Bill, because a lot of stuff happened over the weekend, week two of the college football season, and week one of the NFL season is with every football episode. We'd like to start off with my favorite segment of the show and that's Homer's corner. And uh, listen, my Homer's corner is not Carolina game calculated, despite the fact that I'm rocking my game cock gear after a big win over Kentucky over the weekend. Uh, mine has to do with none other than the Carolina Panthers. And I should mention that uh, and, and give a shout out to Southern, the Southern distilling company up in Statesville, North Carolina, because they, Invited alongside my co-host of the Cat Cave, uh, which is my Carolina Panthers podcast, Shannon Smith and I were invited as quote unquote influencers to go tour the distillery and celebrate the launch of their limited edition uh, bourbon whiskey um, to commemorate the Carolina Panthers 30th year in the NFL. It was a phenomenal experience. The staff were incredible. Uh, It was very educational, very fun, and it tasted delicious. So um, to, to give them a quick shout and a cheap plug, a uh, free plug, because they're not paying me for this. If you're ever in the area and you want to check them out, Southern Distilling Company, uh, 211 Jennings Road in Statesville, North Carolina. Check them out. Sign up for a tour. I promise you, you will not regret it. Now, having said all that, because we commemorated the 30th anniversary of the Carolina Panthers, this may turn out to be the worst worst year in Carolina Panthers history. <laughs> Because if you watch the first game of the season, they lost to the New Orleans Saints 47-10 to uh, on the road in a game that saw Bryce Young once again sacked four times, two interceptions, one his first career rushing touchdown, but no passing touchdowns. Uh, and all in all, a bad showing. The defense looked bad. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, but I will I will give you two examples as to why I think the Carolina Panthers will go 0-17 to be the first team to ever do it. Uh, Derek Carr threw a bomb to Rashid, Rahid Shahid in the first half. And as Rashid, Rahid Shahid had to lay out for the ball and stumbled into the end zone, former Gamecock J.C. Horn gave up on the play. There was no over-the-help safety. And instead of running out the play and trying to prevent the touchdown, you could clearly see him pull up on the play that allowed for the touchdown. The very first offensive possession, the very first offensive play in the Carolina Panthers uh, 2024 season, Bryce Young threw an interception. And add, to add insult to injury, as he walked off the field, you can see him smiling and laughing with somebody on, somebody else on the offense. I believe I even saw a handshake. If Bryce Young in year two has not learned the fact that, listen, Fans are fed up with being really bad. And to me, this clearly shows, and this is somebody who is is, is is overly patient with my sports teams. If Carolina, if South Carolina goes seven and five this year or five and seven, I'm going to be patient in the fact that we've got to get more of the right guys in here. I was very, very patient with Bryce Young. Bad coaching staff, bad offense, bad offensive line. Let's see how he does. And I know we're in only game one of the season. But it's not a good look when you have been criticized as maybe you weren't the right guy. You've been criticized as as being too small, as just not being as good as advertised. To throw an interception on the first play of the season and be seen smiling and laughing as you go off the field. Bryce Young, you are not the guy. 
I don't know how the Panthers get out of this, but I can I can see a clear path to the Panthers going 0-17. There's not a game on that schedule that you can look at and be like, well, Panthers might have a shot. And if you think I'm lying, let's go through it. They get the Chargers this weekend. Then they're at the Raiders. They get the Bengals, the Bears, the Falcons. Washington, Denver. The Giants may be the, the closest game that might be competitive to the Carolina Panthers, but I don't see it happening at this point. David Tepper is the worst owner in the NFL, the worst owner in sports. And if the Carolina Panthers go 0-17, it would not shock me if David Tepper decided to clean house again and set this franchise back another five years. As a, as a, as a lifelong supporter of the Carolina Panthers, as a host of a Carolina Panthers podcast, I don't want to see this happen. But I'm afraid that's where we're headed. That's my segment of Homer's Corner. Bill is going to go back and talk some college football in his Homer's Corner as he is going to talk more Gator football in I, his – go ahead, Bill. Take, take I, it away. I don't know if I want to move on from this Carolina Panthers situation. I, I want to say one thing about it before I move on to four Absolutely. years Absolutely. It is obvious, and I don't know if you know that. If you pick the wrong quarterback, especially at the first pick overall, it immediately sets your franchise back a minimum of five years. You're getting five years that you're throwing away. It's guaranteed it's five years that are going to be junk. And if Bryce Young is not the guy, we are only in year two. Have fun being part of the Cat Cave, Ryan, because it is going to be a long <laughs> four years. <laughs> Yes. yes, and the reason for that is obviously they're going to let him play throughout his rookie co- r- rookie contract. That's usually what happens. That's a minimum of four years with a fifth year option with a guy that was picked first overall. Maybe if he's don't. not the guy by year four, the fifth year does not get picked up. Now you're picking a guy at the end of year four, probably in a high spot with a bad team. So now you've got another so- quarterback pick. So that's year four. The end of year four. That means in year five you get a new quarterback. And he's Bill, usually, and you watch the the rookie so far this season, or so far in week one, I guess they were not good. Uh, Bill, hypothetically speaking, because I know I want you to get to Florida Gator football. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't think there's a chance that if this continues down this path and the Panthers go zero and seventeen, you don't think there's a possibility that they trade Bryce Young away for like a fourth round pick just to just to start over again? I can tell you right now, you are not. As it stands today, I don't think there's a team in the NFL that is hungry enough to take Bryce Young on as the project they are probably perceiving him as right now. That's not fair. with CJ Stroud and AR15 or AR5, whatever. AR5, yeah. AR5, yeah. Uh, with him looking like he might know how to play football, which you and I are both going to be shocked by. We will be shocked if he is the better quarterback between him and Bryce Young. We we took major, major dumps on him coming out of the draft, right? Yeah. I would be happy. Like, Florida Gator, hey, I'm not going to be that upset, right? But Bryce Young looks awful, awful. And, and we're making excuses for him. You're making – you made excuses for him last year. I don't want to say excuses, but you said – you know, you just said it. Bad coaching staff, bad offensive line, bad wide receivers. Yeah, no way. They've weapons. tried to give him something this year. They, they signed the most expensive – Interior lineman in a very long time with Robert Hunt coming from the Miami Dolphins. Please don't steal people like that from us anymore. But guess what? We had the number two pass pass protection uh, grade in football this week. So and they yeah. they still gave up four sacks, Bill. Yeah, they still well, no, gave I, up. You four can't sacks. fix the whole offensive line in one season. You can try. Sometimes you can with with the right if the right free agents fall where they may. But look. You're just going to keep making excuses for him. And that's what's going to happen. That's why you get five years down the road is because they're going to continue to make excuses. His offense isn't good enough. His receiver, your offensive line isn't good enough. His receivers aren't good enough. His running backs aren't good. It's always somebody else's fault until I they finally just go, you know he can't play football. I don't think he's good enough. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for him. I don't watching either. I didn't think it was the right pick when they. Yeah. Watching him laugh after the interception completely changed my perception on Bryce Young. I don't think he's the guy. Um, I right. picked. We did it on this show. I said C.J. Stroud was a better quarterback when they came out of college. Yeah, you did. I said when he played in the bowl in the bowl, it wasn't the bowl game. It was a playoff game. The playoff game against Alabama. He showed me something. They played against each other. Alabama was clearly the better team overall. 
I think it was Alabama. Yes. Or was it Georgia? It was Georgia. Georgia. You're right. It was Georgia. So that Georgia was clearly the better team. Ended up winning the national title. Uh, They, Ohio State didn't, I didn't think they were going to even play with them. And CJ Stroud carried that team in that game. And I, at that moment I went, and I thought he was before that, but at that moment I was like, he's better. Uh, Justin Herbert did the same thing when he played for Oregon. I think he played in the Rose Bowl against Stanford and carried the team to the win. Uh, my boss at the time said, Herbert's got it. And I said, no, no, he doesn't. Yeah, well, he did. I'm not sure he still does because uh, I've said that before too. Anyway, let's yeah. talk about some Gator football. And I just, I'm just going to be quick yeah. about this. Week one, Florida Gators, and I talked about it last week in my homer's corner. Billy Napier is in trouble. He's in trouble. And he has a really good quarterback recruit in DJ Lagway. Talked about this last week. Week one, Graham Mertz has a bad game. Gets knocked out of the game with a concussion. Lagway comes in, plays a little better against Miami. But it was the game was gone. You know, we didn't really care. DJ Lagway proceeded to start this week's game. Did you see his stats, Ryan? I saw the huge bomb that he hit. I didn't see his mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He he had didn't he have like a, a freshman record in passing? No. Yeah, he had a Florida freshman record for passing yards. It was a Florida freshman record. He went 18 for 29. Granted, this is against Samford, so take for, you know take it with what you, with a grain of salt, I guess. Right? Yeah. 18 for 25, 456 yards and three touchdowns. 456 yards. He also ran five times for 16 yards. None of those things Graham Mertz would have done against Samford. So now there is a quarterback controversy, and Billy Napier was asked what he's going to do at quarterback next week. And most people are saying that they believe Napier will start Graham Mertz. Yeah, I'm not sure I get it. This is why I'm not a coach, and I just get to talk about it on a podcast. But I'm pretty sure neither one of us will be the co- the coach of Florida Gator football next year because that makes zero sense to me. Do you think we can see a Chris Lee, Tim Tebow type situation here? I think that's what people are sort of expecting going forward. He said he's going to play both of them, but I have no idea. When you have the weapon that DJ Lagway, I think, is going to turn into in college football, and I'm not sure that's going to be as a Florida Gator because, like I said before, if he – If Billy Napier does get fired, I'm not sure Lagway stays there. I do not know if he's loyal to the Florida Gators or if he's loyal to Billy Napier as his recruiter. So I think you should be starting Lagway in order to save your job. I know Graham Mertz made a commitment to the Florida Gators. I get it. You're trying to be loyal to a guy that that showed when, when you were down and out and he came from Wisconsin, he went into the transfer portal and he came to Florida. And I get that you want to be loyal to those guys. It's his senior season. He has no shot at the NFL if you bench him now for a true freshman. But the true freshman is better, Billy. Come on, man. Like, what are we doing? Maybe lag. Maybe Lagway enters the portal and becomes the second consecutive DJ to play for Florida State. Only this one's better. I don't hurt my feelings <laughs> like that. I don't hurt my feelings like that. That would I would well, be wrecked. I'm so excited about this guy because he is the future of Florida Gators football for the next three years. Like I said, the Max Preps High School Player of the Year last year. I am so excited about this guy. Put him on the field. I didn't get to watch the Sanford game because I went to the Furman game. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get to watch the Sanford game, and it, obviously, I don't even think it was on TV, so I didn't record it or anything like that. Um, but, I mean, this guy, 456 yards, come on. Come on. What are we doing? Put him on the field. Well, let's let's stay in the vein of college football. I love the homer's corner. I love, I love the passion behind DJ Lagway getting the start. But let's talk about week two in college football, because there were some games that were closer than they should have been that – Turned around in the second half where teams that were supposed to blow other teams out uh, did not, but they came back. They, they had to do come from behind victories. Uh, Bill, give me some of your surprises from week two. Well, my first surprise is that uh, Rudy Rudiger entered the transfer portal this week because Notre Dame laid what's known as a giant egg against Northern Illinois at home. I have to ask you, Ryan. This has got to be the surprise of week number one. Of week number one. Oh, right? we, we, or we, Northern yeah, Illinois was one. paid. Yeah, Northern Illinois was paid one point eight million dollars to go beat Notre Dame, and Notre Dame's kicker was the kicker at South Carolina last year that had his field goal blocked to end the game. Bigger shocker: Appalachian State over Michigan in two thousand seven, or Northern Illinois over a number five Notre Dame team that just came off of a shellacking against Texas A and M on at Kyle Field. 
Which one's which one's more surprising? I know Appalachian State was a, a FCS school. Yeah, I gotta go with App State. I think okay. App State until until the like a team like the Citadel comes out and knocks off like an Alabama or a Georgia. I don't think there's ever going to be an upset in college football that will top App State over Michigan at the Big House. FCS knocking off a top three Michigan team at home. I don't think it ever, but it, it's it ranks up there. Northern Illinois is ranked right now in the top 25 after beating Notre Dame. But I, I also I also think that this is sort of a uh, a product of year in and year out Notre Dame being overrated to start the season. The same thing happens with Florida State. The same thing happens with Southern Cal, and the same thing happens with Notre Dame. Every that's single not year, fair. we but see this happen. Fair. They just beat a ranked Texas A&M team in Texas. They're not ranked anymore. Oh, they're not. I, I know. I understand that. We'll find out how good they are this week. They play Florida, but at the same exactly right. But at the same time, the the talent level clearly was supposed to be there for Texas A and M. They're not that far removed from the high recruiting classes that that Fisher was pulling in, and yeah. we thought they would be pretty decent. And Notre Dame beat them on their field, and then they go home and do this. Like that doesn't make sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Uh, you say overrated. I wasn't feeling it after week one. I felt like no Notre Dame after week one was legit, and now I have no idea who they are. But surprising, yes, they are who we thought they were. Yeah, <laughs> playoffs. Crazy. Don't talk about playoffs. 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 All right. Listen, if you look at some other teams, first of all, Utah knock. Utah takes out Baylor, but uh, but uh, Cam Rising goes down again. We don't know his status. So that may throw a wrinkle into Utah's plans. I mean, you look at some of these other games. Oklahoma State had to come back and beat Ar Arkansas. Was up big on Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State wins that game in overtime. Michigan puts uh, gets pounded by Texas, which some people saw coming. Um, let's see. You've got uh, who was uh, Penn State had a fight on their hands. If I can find you, they were playing. Um, they they trailed late in that game. Why can't I find them? Um, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, who did, who did Penn State beat this week? Um, I'm scrolling. Was it Grambling uh, State? Bowling Green. Bowling Green, that's it. Yeah. Uh, they had to come back and beat Bowling Green. LSU was up by 10 in the third quarter on Nichols State before finally breaking away. Oregon, 37-34 yeah, over Boise State. This isn't the old Boise State that knocked off Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl or whatever it was years ago. I don't – I think Oregon might have been one of those teams that was overhyped to start the year, yeah, Bill. I, I agree with that one. There's, they seem to be scoring points. Dylan Gabriel, not a terrible game this week after not a great game last week, but their defense didn't look great against Boise State. I think Tennessee is legit after a I'm terrified of NC State. I'm terrified of Tennessee. Um, Oklahoma. But when yeah. they – they had a fight on their hands with Houston. Houston. Houston, who came in 0-1, lost to UNLV lost 27 to 7, and then six, barely lose to Oklahoma by four. 16 to 12, Oklahoma over Houston. Listen, I went on record preseason that said that Oklahoma had to redo their entire offense and they weren't going to be as good as people expected. So far, looking at this game alone, I wasn't far off. There's a lot of teams in the SEC as a South Carolina fan that I don't fear anymore, especially because I think one of the biggest surprises of the weekend is the fact that South Carolina, a week after beating Old Dominion by four or five points, goes to Kentucky, who was supposed to host game day or supposed to have game day host for them against Georgia this weekend. And they hold Kentucky without a touchdown in that game, 31 to six. My Gamecocks get the win over Kentucky. Who got and game the day? Kentucky South Carolina LSU oh. has game day this coming weekend after the beatdown that, that South Carolina handed Kentucky after 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 LSU loses week one uh against uh was it uh, Southern California? They struggle last week until finally pulling away. Um it's gonna be a really fun game in Columbia between South Carolina and LSU. But yeah, a lot of a lot of interesting scores, a lot of interesting games with teams that should not have struggled that struggled, um, and and teams like oh, and how about Auburn, California? Cal came in to Jordan Hare, now an ACC team, and knocked off Auburn, twenty one to fourteen. So no yeah, sense. there's um North Carolina beat Charlotte thirty eight to twenty. Um, I mean Iowa Illinois, State knocks Illinois off Illinois beat Kansas. 
Yeah, Illinois beat Kansas. Iowa State came back and knocked off Iowa at home. Kansas State struggled with Tulane. Kansas State wins 34-27 over Tulane, and Kansas State and Kansas were supposed to be legit this year, and they both struggled. So, yeah, and then Georgia Tech, who people thought no. – um, <laughs> people thought we're going to be good after beating Florida State. They lose to Syracuse on the road. Yeah, I love college football, long. man. That didn't last I, long. I do love college football. Hey, but there's a st- Clemson what? found their points this week. They didn't have any against Georgia. They couldn't find any left, but they found them this week. I, I looked. I that was weird, man. I, I was like, ah, App State will play with Clemson if Clemson's that bad. And I looked at it. It was yeah. like forty nine to nothing at one point. I was like, what just happened? Shout out to Michael Davis. That's his alma mater. And um, yeah, like you said, sixty six to twenty. Uh, Clemson over App State. I wasn't going to bring it up, but congratulations to Clemson for getting back on track. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about another game in particular, and that's the Colorado loses on the road to Nebraska. Um, let's talk about the kids of the one of, of Coach Prime. Shiloh Sanders goes out with a with a broken wrist in this game. He's going to miss some time. But the bigger story to me is that Shador Sanders, quarterback, um, son of 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 of. Deion Sanders leaves the field with two minutes remaining in this game. And the post-game presser puts the blame on the offensive line. I'm not going to pull out his exact quote, but basically something along the lines of um, how many times did the their opposing quarterback from Nebraska get touched is what he said. Basically throwing his offensive line under the bus. It's also come out this week that um, it's been disputed, but it really hasn't been. That after touchdowns, Colorado normally goes immediately to play the fight song from the band. But if Shador Sanders scores, they play a small clip of his rap song before they go into the fight song. If this wasn't a family show, I'd be saying dirty words and Mm. nasty names. What the hell is going on in Colorado, Mm. Bill? Uh, Come on. Come on. It's it's uh, It's a reality show. That's not a real coach. It's not a real coach. He's not. Listen, we we talked about it many months ago that Deion Sanders still hasn't done a home visit for any of his recruiting. Kids are going there for the show. If you're going there and some of them are leaving. Cormani McLean, the number one cornerback recruited in last year's recruiting cycle, transferred to Florida this year. They're leaving. They're realizing this is a joke. And eventually, so will the rest of America, and Colorado will be firing Deion Sanders, and he will head back to whatever Division II school that will pick him up until he maybe learns how to coach. He didn't put any effort into playing football, Ryan, so why would you expect him to put any effort into coaching? So He's a physical freak. I will say this. There's a lazy narrative that's going around that that, uh, the media has turned on – Deion Sanders and that it's a race thing. And I think that's an extremely lazy narrative because you and I talked about it last year on this show that we didn't think that Deion Sanders was going to be good at Colorado. We, we were along for the ride because we were, it was, it was intriguing for like three weeks. It was fun for four weeks (laughs) until they actually, until they started playing real football teams. Yes. The reason that Deion Sanders had so much success at Jackson state, was because he was paying D1 players to go play at a D2 school. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. It doesn't work. It didn't work in the Pac-12 last year. It's not working in the Big 12 this year. Like you said, it's a reality show. It's all smoke and mirrors. I don't buy any of it. And I don't think that he gets fired from Colorado so much as when Shador leaves He's going to go take an assistant coaching job wherever Shador Sanders gets drafted to. Oh, this makes zero I, sense. It, of course it does. Of course it makes zero sense. Colorado is undisciplined. They're not good. Uh, Neither is Shador. I, Neither is Shador. Yeah. Somebody show me tape outside of oh, Jackson I, State where he does anything worth a darn. I now listen. I think Travis Hunter is one of the most talented football players on the on the planet. Absolutely. Travis Hunter is very talented. But I'm telling you right now, they are going to do everything they can to push the narrative that Shador Sanders ought to be the number one pick in the NFL draft next season. If everything we talked about the Panthers earlier comes to fruition, from my perspective, and they decide to somehow offload uh, a Bryce Young, if they go and make the second mistake and draft Shador Sanders, 
I will lose all faith that Carolina ever wants to win another football game. Whoever we now we said this last year, and I think we might wind up eating crow. It's still too early to tell. But we said last year, whoever drafted Anthony Richardson, the the coaching staff and the GM would be looking for a job in five years. Still early to tell, but Richardson made some phenomenal plays last week, albeit in a losing effort that made him look like he could be the real deal. And he also we 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 also uh, criticized him for his accuracy issues, and we saw that last week too. He completed I nine passes. Say, he completed nine I, passes. Let's let's ease down a little bit. I will say with a hundred percent uh accu- I will say with hundred percent confidence, not so much as I did with AR five. I will say this with a hundred percent confidence. Shador Sanders will never be a successful NFL quarterback. Whoever drafts Shador Sanders will be in a rebuild mode five years later. The same way we talked about AR fifteen and the or AR five and the Colts. Wherever Shador Sanders winds up will be an absolute dumpster fire. And you know where he might wind up? The Cleveland Browns, where quarterbacks go to die. Mm. Um, uh, Yeah, uh, good luck to Colorado, man. It's not going to get any easier for them. Uh, speaking of getting any easier, not getting any easier, week three of college football is coming up. There's only a couple games that feature ranked versus ranked matchups. We're going to pick one of them in the podcast. Pick them later in the show. Um, the biggest, the marquee matchups, you got college game day at LSU, number 16 in the country at South Carolina, um, uh, Boston college, number 24 in the country going on the road to take on number six, Missouri, who was all of a sudden looking like an action, like, like an, an absolute force to reckon with. Um, you talked about, I know you didn't want to mention it, but, but Florida and Texas A&M, that is going to be a season making game for one of those programs. So that will be an interesting game to watch. That game, do you know what time that game is at, Bill? No. Is that a is that a four thirty kickoff? Because I can't Don't find know. it all of a sudden. Terrifying. Um, I, you know what, Ryan? I'm not going to say it's a season making game, but it will stop your season from being over. That is the game that will follow up South Carolina LSU on ABC at three thirty. You do have some rivalry games this weekend: Oregon, Oregon State, Washington State, Washington, uh, Utah, Utah State. Um, there are some there are some rivalry games this week if you want to call do, them. Do that. you know what that is? Do you know what that is? What That's the, the Pac-12 broken up, and now the Pac-12 teams that want to like have their protected rivalries where they have their individual in-state rivals are playing this week. That's who Colorado, Colorado That's State. The There's another one. Yeah, yeah. That's Colorado, the Apple Colorado Cup Colorado that's played. That Washington Washington State game is usually yeah. played around Thanksgiving weekend. They're playing it early because they that towards the end of the season you got to play your conference games. So yeah, they same can, thing they with can Oregon, fix Oregon it. State. That was normally called the Civil War. They can they ought to be able to fix that the way that South Carolina, Clemson, Florida, Florida State, Georgia, Georgia Tech all have it figured out. Kentucky, Louisville, um, and Colorado, Colorado State is this weekend, 7:30 kickoff. So yeah, they'll be able to figure it out. But yeah, a lot of rivalry games from out the, like you said, the West Coast conferences. Right. Um, and then uh a couple of really marquee SEC games that can that can make or break it. By the way, right just before we move on. Um, the trivia question will eventually will eventually be be said maybe 10, 20 years from now when the SEC expanded to 16 teams, who was the very first team to control sole first place in the 16 team oh, conference gosh. without divisions? And that will be your South Carolina Gamecocks as they hold first place in the SEC, probably for the for the first and only time they ever will, as they are the only one and team inside the conference. Listen, listen, they could win this week. They could win this week. I know. I know. I'm. I. I thought we were going to lose to Kentucky by three touchdowns last week, and absolutely and destroyed then, them. And we, we destroyed we, we, them. We kept them out of the end zone, and we gifted them three points before halftime. And all they're doing is getting my hopes up so that they can let me down on Saturday. I'm not getting my hopes up. We'll, we'll pick that game in the show at podcast pickums, but uh, I'm excited as a Carolina fan to at least watch the game. Um, I digress. Let's move on to the NFL talk because we were, we, we had a, 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 I don't know. I don't want to say a surprising week one in the NFL because I've, I've shown you guys this on the show before. This is where I pick my winners and losers <laughs> of every game throughout the entire season. And based on this alone, nerd. you're such a nerd because, because podcast pickups did not go well for me last week. Spoiler alert. Uh, on this sheet, I went 14 and two last week in my preseason predictions for week one. Uh, Bill, 
I think we can both agree that there is one big shocker in week one. Two. I think there's two. Let's let's start with the first one. The New England Patriots knock off the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, T. Higgins did not play in this game. Jamar Chase has been holding out for quite some time and did not have a very good game. The Bengals offense looks terrible. The Bengals lose, I believe it was 16 to 10, was the final. Yeah, 16 uh, to 10. Yep. In Cincinnati. The head coaching from, uh, debut of G- uh, Gerard is it Gerard Mayo? Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the number one. Bill, what's, what's the other one that you thought was a big big shocker? I think the other one is the Steelers over the Falcons in Atlanta, with yeah. Russell Wilson being a, basically a game time decision, inactive. They start Justin Fields. They go down to Atlanta. We both had Atlanta being a pretty decent team, and the Steelers not being a very good team. We did say prior to the game that the Steelers always play good defense. They always, that's those are Mike Tomlin teams. They always play good defense in this game. They did. They held the Falcons to 10 points. The only person that caught a touchdown for that team, Kyle Pitts. Let's go. Let's go. How about that? Uh, but yeah. Steelers win that game 18 to 10. Yeah. That's a shocker. I think that one's pretty surprising. Steelers always finding a way, man. Mike Tomlin, heck of a coach. Yeah. Cousins did not look great in that game. I, I mm-hmm. actually listened to the Rob Brown show earlier today. Uh, being Tuesday on on the fan upstate, and Lonzo actually made a good point that uh, that Cousins is coming off an injury, didn't play in the preseason. Let's wait until week three before we jump to any conclusions about Kirk Cousins. Let's talk about a few other games. Arizona gave Buffalo all they could handle, and for all intents and purposes, probably should have won that game. Uh, the Chicago Bears, despite Caleb Williams not playing well, gets a win in Caleb Williams' debut. How about the Chargers? Coming out and dropping 22 and knocking off the Raiders. We kind of wrote off the Chargers preseason. No. Um, I had the Chargers with a winning record, I believe. I What did I have them at? Uh, LA Chargers. Yeah, I had them at 7 and 10. So um, I kind of wrote them off, but they get off with the season with a win. Texans Colts was a great game. A lot of really fun football. Your Dolphins struggled a little bit with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Had to come back a little bit terrifying. A little bit we'll terrifying. Talk- We'll talk more about the Dolphins here in a second, but let's let's move on to the next topic here, and that is the fact that Jordan Love signs a big contract extension in the offseason on Friday night in Brazil in, lo- in route to a, a 34-29 to loss. Jordan Love sprains his MCL late in this game. It did not look good when it happened, but he will miss some time. Bill, we both thought the Packers were going to be halfway decent this year. I had the Packers at 10 and seven. Uh, what does this mean for the Packers for the next four to six weeks as Jordan Love recovers from an MCL injury? Oh, the bad news is I don't even know who the Packers backup quarterback is. That's that's terrible. It is Malik Willis, former draft pick of the Titans. Oh, out. no. That's yes. right. They traded for him late in and the preseason, didn't they? Th- they have announced that he will be starting. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness! Um, let's look. Let's look. What at does this schedule. mean for the Packers? This means, oh no! Have you seen the Dr Pepper commercial where the the fans are all riding the hype train? And the guy gets the tattoo. Well, yeah, the guy that the, the conductor just got he came in. All right, everybody off the hype train. Everybody off the hype train. Yeah. We're done. Uh, playoffs? No, it depends on how long Love is out. I, you know, I'm kind of bummed. I was just thinking as we were sitting here, Ryan, and we're talking about things, and and I'm we have fantasy football coming up, the buys and sells, and I was thinking about Jaden Reed, and I was I was like, oh, you know, I've got Jaden Reed, I have Tank Dell, I have Jaden. I was all excited. I was like, oh, Jaden Reed's giving me my number two until you just said that. Crud. How, listen, this uh, is the, this is they're, they're, ske- they're scheduled for the next four weeks. They're they're at home against the Colts this week. That's bad. Uh, they're they're on the road at Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee doesn't look great. They look terrible. Um, let's see. I just lost my place. They get the Vikings at home. The Vikings with Sam Darnold looked competent, but they were also playing the Giants this week. How so bad are the Montreal Canadiens? I mean, the New York Giants. What kind of uniforms would they wear? Uh, it was terrible. Then they're at the Rams, who gave the Lions everything they could handle on Sunday night football this week, losing in overtime. Um, and then they're uh, home to Arizona. Week seven, they get Houston. I feel like that's the earliest we're going to see Jordan Love back. And they might be like two and five in point or two yeah. and four at that point going into week seven it might yeah. it doesn't look pretty for the for the packers uh, speedy recovery to jordan love i don't like to see anybody hurt uh so regardless of the fact that i'm a lions fan and the he plays for the packers 
Um, I'm glad that it wasn't more serious and hope that hope that it's it's not as bad as they 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 fear and that, that he's back sooner rather than later for their sake. Uh, let's move on here. The Dallas Cowboys, uh, they had a lot of controversy in the offseason because Jerry Jones did not seem all that thrilled to give anybody contracts extensions. First, they pay C.D. Lamb, and now Dak Prescott signs a four-year, $240 million extension that makes him the highest-paid player in NFL history. They paid a guy. What, what's four four and a twenty four? Is that sixty million dollars a year? That has has Dallas ever won a playoff game with Dak Prescott? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't think he has. I I don't know who started it. I don't know who started it, Bill. But who in the f destroyed the quarterback market in the NFL? Is Dak Prescott worth this money? Trevor Lawrence, I think, was the one that everybody was surprised by when he got 55. Um, I, I'm impressed by my Miami Dolphins as Tua is no longer, I believe, in the top five in pay. And he got paid this year. So yeah. good job, Miami. Way to go, Chris Greer. Uh, mm-hmm. But listen, Dak Prescott, believe it or not, was the – and I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this on the podcast, Ryan. If you believe in statistics such as QBR, which is ESPN's rating of a quarterback that includes things like running, uh, ex- expected completion, per- like there's a lot of things that go into QBR, okay? Dak Prescott was the best quarterback in the NFL last year, regular season. He was. He was. I looked it up this week because I had an argument at work about how good Dak Prescott really is, even though everybody likes to poop on him. And he really is that good. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. Uh, he don't say ass poop. <laughs> <laughs> but he really is that good. He really was that good. Yeah, last yeah, season. yeah. Okay, so he had a fantastic year. Is that C.D. Lamb? Doesn't matter. We pay Miami paid Tyreek a, mil- a bunch of money. They paid Jalen Waddle a bunch of money. Everybody's starting to figure out that wide receivers make a difference, and, and they're really yeah. starting to shell out for wide receivers because those guys get open. They help your quarterback, and it's that kind of thing. Uh, so Dak Prescott was fantastic. He was decent week one, good enough against what would what was supposed to be a decent Browns team. But of course, he got paid before that game ever happened. You're right. He was actually, I think, the third worst quarterback in the playoffs last year. The QBR was fantastic in the regular season, and I think he lost the first game of the playoffs that he played in. And I'm pretty sure he was the third worst quarterback in the playoffs. Uh, and I th- think he played at home. Did he play at home? I don't remember. See, that's so long ago. That was last yeah. year. Nobody remember. Yeah, he played at yeah, home. They were, they were at home. So I don't know. Sixty million dollars is a lot of money, but he he's been good. He's been good. I just don't know. I don't. He has to win in the playoffs. You know, it's funny. We know the last time the Dallas Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was a not, I was I was a, a child, a literal 1995. child. Nineteen ninety five yeah. was the last time the Dallas Cowboys won the Super Bowl. It's a long time ago. Troy Aikman was. I was seven. Emmitt Smith was a running back. It, you were seven. I was seven. My, Michael Irvin was still on that team. Uh, so they had great players, Hall, Hall of Fame players. They've had good quarterbacks since. Tony Romo was a good quarterback. I don't care what you have to say about the man. He wasn't good in the playoffs. Weird, right? Because now you've got Dak Prescott doing the exact same thing. So this is strange. And now he's the richest man in football. Uh, real quick, you mentioned QBR. Uh, do you know what the QBR for the quarterback for Kentucky was last year, or last week against South Carolina? No, is that QBR? Is that so? Q, quarterback rating in college is different than quarterback rating. It's in different. Pro. Yeah, I don't know. If, still, is QBR the same? I don't. I don't know if everything goes into it, but national pundits who saw the stat didn't think it was possible. Zero. Want to take a sh- one point two? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, right? I'm pretty sure. I can probably say this with confidence. If I was, I still have eligibility. If I, I'm pretty sure it couldn't get much worse. I'm, uh, you know what? I'm going to submit my application. One point that's, two. Oh, that's right. really bad. That's really bad. Let's let's you let's guys, talk about. I don't know something. how you did. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you did. How have, did you beat Kentucky? We have a really, we have a really good front seven, 
And I'm curious. You I, have I can't a really wait to see good freshman five star defensive end. Yeah. Stewart is going to be a, a, a yeah. force to reckon with. And I with. cannot wait till next year when he's playing for the Gators because you know he's only going to spend one year losing. I. Oh, he's going to go to Florida where they're going to win, right? They still what? have faith. DJ Lagway's there. He's a great recruiter. That's why they had a one good of our recruiting team. and transfer class. They just suck. One of our team, Bill, one of our teams is 2 and 0 going into week 3. Let's just I know. Leave it's it hilarious. Don't worry. We'll All end right. up with the same record. Come on. All right. Let's 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 go to a more serious topic here because I and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but we kind of have to. And maybe we zip through some of the stuff and later in the show with podcast pick him and and and, and buys or sells, but sure. before the before the Miami Dolphins played the Jacksonville Jaguars this past weekend, Tyreek mm. Hill was pulled over by police and in, in by Miami Dade police. Um, the body cam footage has been released. There was a a, a, a private video that was released where um, Tyreek Hill uh, basically asked the police to write him his ticket so he could go go on his way, and a police officer decided to have a power trip. Can I quote? And, Please handed him his license and said, do what you need to do and rolled his window up. And apparently the, the officer took some, took offense to that. Yes. And next, next thing you know, they pull Tyreek Hill out of the car, throw him on the ground, knee in his back. A la George Floyd from 2020. This is, this is, this is an uncomfortable conversation, an uncomfortable situation. They they would uh, would would lean on Tyreek Hill, handcuff him. Um, they tried to sit him on the sidewalk, and as Tyreek is pleading that he just had knee surgery, an officer borderline tries to put him in a chokehold to put him on the sidewalk. Teammates Johnu Smith and Calais Campbell were around. The officers asked them to leave because they were all riding into the stadium together in their own vehicles. And for their part in staying behind to support and make sure that this situation didn't turn into another George Floyd situation, they were both detained before being released. The Miami Dolphins released a statement about the treatment by the police officers. Um, as I pull that up, Bill, and I might be able to pull it up quicker rather than later, this is the this is the kind of thing that Colin Kaepernick kneeled for that would eventually lead him to being blackballed from the NFL. Here's the statement from the Miami Dolphins, and it's long, so I'm going to try to read it quickly. We are saddened by the overly aggressive and violent conduct directed towards Tyreek Hill, Calais Campbell, and Jonu Smith by police officers before yesterday's game. It's both maddening and heartbreaking to watch the very people we, we trust to protect our community use such unnecessary force and hostility towards these players Yet it is also a reminder that not every situation like this ends in peace as we are grateful this one did. What if I wasn't Tyreek Hill is a question that will carry with resounding impact. We are proud to have a strong and positive relationship with the Miami Dade Police Department and other law enforcement agencies and recognize that the vast majority of officers do serve the community with the utmost character and desire to protect all citizens. However, as in on full display in the videos released tonight, there are some officers who mistake their responsibility and commitment to serve with misguided power. While we commend MDPD for taking the right and necessary action to quickly release this footage, we also urge them to take equally swift and strong action against the officers who engage in such despicable behavior. We stand beside Tyreek and our players as they work to use their platform and this situation to make a positive impact in our community. We have always believed that the game of football holds a unique power to bring people together, and we remain hopeful that that through the collective work of the players, organization, and our community partners, we can create lasting change. Bill, this is a player that is on the team that you root for. You just talked about he got a big money contract. Tyreek Hill was charged with careless driving and a seatbelt violation. What's your take on this situation? I mean, I, I, to be honest, Ryan, as we're sitting here talking about it, I'm getting semi, it feels weird. I'm almost a little bit emotional about it. Uh, I love Tyreek Hill, not just as a football player, but I've watched him videos of him off the field. And even though he's Johnny Appleseed when it comes to women and, and children, uh, 
he seems like just a, a genuine, legitimate, cool guy. Like, like he's not a, a bad person at all. From what the officers are saying, they perceived he was going 60 miles an hour. Nobody actually clocked him. They saw it with their eyes and said they was he was going faster, and they thought it was about 60 miles an hour. Now, he was driving a McLaren 720S. Now, I don't know about you, Ryan. There's not a lot of people that are going to be driving around Miami out in front of the stadium that aren't football players that are driving a McLaren 720S, okay? It's going to be uh, pr- likely um, that it's somebody Very few on, people. It's going to be likely that it's somebody on the Miami Dolphins. And these are guys that live in Miami. These these officers are probably guys that live down there. They, they are aware of what's going on. It's not just like, hey, I'm on a traffic beat today right outside. The, they know what's going on. They pull him over. It... <laughs> From I watched the body cam footage and my my mouth drop, dropped open when I watched it. I want to say one thing. I use this this saying a lot uh, when a lot of these things happen, and, and and it's it's not what I don't want it to come off wrong, but I always say play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And Tyreek was not cooperative. He definitely Tyreeked it. He definitely went. I'm a celebrity. Here's my driver's license. There goes my window. They told him to open the window. He got mad at them for banging on his window. He was not cooperative. He was not. That's where the problem begins, I think, for me. I I think that's the issue. I I wish Tyreek had been cooperative, and then there would have been maybe a little bit more of an argument against what was actually going on. With that being said, the police officers did not handle it well from that point forward. Not at all. That was where my mouth dropped open. I didn't like the Tyreek opened his window, handed his license, you know, and then it was kind of like nonchalant about the whole thing. I didn't like that. The officers opened his car door, ripped him out of the car by his hair, put their knee on the small of his back, twisted his arm multiple different ways to the point I'm like, thank goodness Tyreek's an athlete. It's flexible. They would rip my arm off. That had been me. He's yelling the whole time. They're horrible. They they rip him up, you know, stand him up. He's already, you know, been face down on the asphalt. And you said it. They they put him at, you know, they they put him over on the side. And then another guy comes in from out of nowhere when he, they're trying to tell him to sit down, and he's saying, "Look, it's hard for me to sit down, and he's he can't brace himself. I just had knee surgery." And the guy literally like attacks him to put him on the ground. Him. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, what? That's where I'm like, holy! Ca-. At that point. And I want to say what I first, and I've, I've reconsidered. Immediately, I thought to myself, that cop needs to be fired. Like, that's that's awful. Because I'm thinking, if this is me, like, uh, this is crazy. How long is that video, Ryan? And all this stuff transpires in a minute? They have they have a long, a long video that includes everything. It's about an hour and a half. But the few little clips that I've seen all this happens within about within about a three-minute span. It's it's so fast that all this stuff escalates so quickly. And I think that's my yeah. issue. And and the worst part about this whole thing. So not the worst part, but the real, I think key indicator with this whole situation is when they get his driver's license, the, the police officer that re- does not receive his driver's license, he's standing there recognizes that it's Tyreek Hill. And he turns around and says on the body cam footage, it's Tyreek Hill to the other police officers behind him. And those are the guys that come and attack him. What yep. the heck is going on? Like, they knew, they they knew who he was and still went after the man. Like, what What are you worried about here? What, what were they doing? Why act like that? That's my issue. Knowing so, who he is. Now, granted, I know you you don't want him to be celebrity and all that stuff. Like, people, I see the excuses. Like, oh, he's a, he was a celebrity and he was using his celebrity status to act like a jerk. It doesn't matter if you're a celebrity or not. Why is he getting pulled within... 30 seconds of him being pulled over. He's getting pulled out of the car by his hair. Why? Because he wouldn't roll his window down. Yeah, listen. For a second time. He actually did. He cracked it. And they told him to roll it down all the way. Now, granted, I'm pretty sure that the law states that you have to produce your driver's license, proof of registration, whatever he handed to the cop. They're saying that he gave them the correct documentation. And I'm pretty sure the law states you don't have to have your window down after that point. I'm there pretty sure somebody, I'm not 100% sure. There was somebody but, that argued the state of Florida, you have to, but it doesn't matter, right? So let's still let's, the reaction touch, was just too much. Yeah. It was too much. 
let's, it was bad let's on both on sides. A, I think it was bad on both sides. Let's 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 first talk about the fact that you mentioned that Tyreek Hill was uncooperative. Yes. The only thing that he was uncooperative was was rolling down his window, which if you just mentioned, if it's not against the law, he provided the documentation re- requested, mm-hmm. accepted like, hey, you're going to write me a ticket, write me a ticket. I got to go. The cops didn't like that because the cops wanted to have control of the situation. Yes. So regardless of the attitude that Tyreek Hill showed, the reaction from the police officers did not work, was not warranted to go as no. far as they did. Let's no. touch on a let's touch on a word that you used. Within three minutes, it escalated quickly. Yeah. Beyond. I think the biggest the biggest issue that people have with the police is their inability to de-escalate situations. I mentioned it when we first started talking about this, that the reason why Colin Kaepernick started, he first of all, let's let's backtrack. He was sitting during the national anthem. He made the adjustment to kneel during the national anthem as a compromise to a, to to an ex-military member uh, who played in the NFL that said, "Listen, when when we're when we're honoring those who fell in the military, we kneel. So it's it might be more respectful to kneel. But Colin Kaepernick and the other players in the NFL they kneeled for this specific purpose here." Police brutality. And I know that people try to make it into a black or white thing. But I guarantee you, if that was, let's say, Justin Herbert who got pulled over doing that, they're not yanking him out the car. That's not fair. Of co- I mean, it's that's not fair. It's not. You want to know why? Because Scotty Scheffler had this happen to him. Yes. That's so, so okay. So I'm glad Same you brought Scotty Scheffler. Yes. yes. So, so, so I, I use that to say that, like, People want to make police brutality a race issue. It is not. No. Police brutality is an everybody issue. And I'm glad you brought up Scotty Scheffler. Mm-hmm. Because now what's happened to two athletes, to two celebrities, this year. And something's got to change. And unfortunately, this could have ended much worse. Oh, yeah. Imagine imagine if they dislocated. Again, regardless of whether he's playing football, imagine if they'd injured Tyreek Hill. Like you talked about the guy that came over and choked him. I think every single person that responded to that call and escalated that situation, they all deserve to turn in their badges and guns and they shouldn't work in law enforcement ever again. And I don't know if you noticed that they were all on motorcycles and motorcycle cops tend to have the reputation of being more aggressive and being more egotistical than the regular police officer. None of those guys should remain on the police force. This this is a story that never should have stopped being talked about. And I know it's controversial to talk about defund the police and retraining police and this, that, and the other. But this is a prime example of why people have been so up in arms and why people are so frustrated and disliking of the police. Because we see more videos about this than the, than the officers that go to a noise complaint and go play basketball with the kids in the neighborhood. Because this is more prevalent than the, than the than the fun stories we see. I am I am I am grateful and happy that nothing bad happened to Tyreek Hill, that they didn't try to pin John U. Smith and Calais Campbell on some trumped up charges. Um, the one of the officers, I believe it was the first officer, has already been put on administrative leave. But none of those cops should be working anymore. None of those cops should be in law enforcement. Hell, I don't even think they should be able to work in secure in private security. Those guys need to. Those guys need to be working working sanitation somewhere, because they're garbage. So, um, I I have uh, a t- I have a tough time with it, Ryan, because I don't like to, I don't like to believe that I know what it's like to be in a law, a law enforcement officer's shoes. I mean, it's it's one of the most dangerous professions that you can have. You never know what you're walking into. I just feel like in this situation, in this location, what you were dealing with, and the fact that the guy with the body cam recognized who they were talking to, this got out of hand. This got out of hand. There needs to be an investigation why it got out of hand, why they reacted that way, why they were that upset, why that they, knowing that it was Tyreek Hill, you still treated him that way. Why? There, It makes, you know, and I'm not saying it because it's Tyreek Hill, they should treat him any differently, but... At that point, you something should have triggered your, you know, the fight or flight mechanism that they had gone to fight 
they should have seen, hey, this is Tyreek Hill de-escalate. Like this, he, yep. clearly he's not committing crimes. He's not trying to get away from something. He's not, you know, whatever. Um, whatever they thought that they were dealing with. It just made zero sense for them to get as absolutely cr- as crazy and as as hyper as they got with Tyreek and, and violent that they got with Tyreek Hill. The, the knee on the back was absolute insanity. That was insanity. When I saw it's, that, I was like, what is even happening right now? This, and again, this is, and we're going to go late, late on this show. So yeah. I appreciate everybody sticking around We can around go late, quicker. But we can go quicker on the other stuff. This is, this was something that, that needed to be talked about. We normally yeah. don't go into deep pressing issues like this, but the fact that this touched home because it's your team, it's the sport that we love to watch. It's an athlete that we enjoy watching that I think was important to discuss because you, you talked about the knee on the back. Like the, the, the officer that murdered George Floyd, and he, I say murdered because he was convicted of it, kneeled on George Floyd's neck. I talked about it on this show years ago um, to open my show one day because I felt so passionately about the fact that, like, this needs to be discussed. It's not a black and white issue. It is a, a civil rights everyone issue because there are too many cops, like the cops that responded to this situation, out in the world, out in this country, that are that have created distrust with the everyday citizen. And if it can happen to Tyreek Hill, and Bill, I'm glad you mentioned it, if it can happen to Scotty Shepler, Shepler, it can happen to any of us. Uh, so fortunately, Tyreek Hill was able to play in the game, caught a touchdown, and did the behind the back like handcuff celebration to sort of to sort of drive it into the cops. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this situation plays out going forward. Let's get on to some more more fun fun conversations now. Let's talk about uh, fantasy football and bullies, buys and sells, and Bill's factor. Good crap. segue, Ryan. Good segue. <laughs> I, listen, I, I don't talk about something that's not so heavy. I don't. I don't know how to how to transition from that. Bill, uh, last week was very close. I went five and three. You went four and four in in correctly picking players, uh, buying and selling. I was way off on Daniel Jones and and, and Drake London, uh, and I was off on, on Alvin Kamara. And you you picked a, you picked against me on a couple of them that were that were not so good. Um, we could talk about the fact that Daniel Jones and Deshaun Watson. I wish I wish we had more time. Uh, Maybe we talk about them next week. But both of those guys have crippled their franchises because they're both terrible, and the, those franchises are not going to be good until both of those guys are gone. Um, yeah. But uh, again, if this is the first time you ever watched the show or listened to the show, buys and sells are guys that uh, that they're playing fantasy football this week. Based on their ESPN projection, I'm buying them if I think they're going to go over, selling them if they think they're going to go below, and and Bill will call factor crap on it uh, to see whether who's going to give the best fantasy advice this uh, this season. And so let's go ahead and go into our our can, buys can this I, week. Can I say one thing though, Ryan? Please. I, I just want to speak to my credentials as it comes to to fantasy football because did I tell you what I did this week? So I play in one league like, right now because you didn't start up the tap outs and touchdowns league again this season because I'm too busy. Here but, we go. Yeah. So I play in one this season. I already held the record for the highest score in any given week last season. I, I actually hold the record for the largest blowout. I blew somebody out by over 100 points last year. And I held the record for the most points scored in one week. I beat it by 17 this week. I scored 182 points in a non PPR league. Well, um, yes. That's that's so, I went one and two, so that's been fun. I got beat by a kicker on Monday Night Football, so I'm um, sorry. Oh, the uh, yeah, 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 the San Francisco kicker went off, yeah, yeah. Um, well, with all the credentials from both of us, I yes. went five and three, Bill went four and four last week. Let's go into buys and sells this week. You're just guessing Bill, on week one, come on, Bill. I quarterback I'm buying this week is Justin Herbert. I know we didn't have a great last week, as a matter of fact. I sold him last week, and that was right. Uh, This week, he's projected uh, 20.1 points, but he's playing at the Carolina Panthers this week, who last week gave up a ton of yards and a ton of points to Derek Carr. I'm trying to pull up those numbers now. It doesn't even matter. It was was good for fifth most. 27 points for Derek Carr in week one, buying Justin Herbert. uh, Fact or crap, Bill? I think that's fact. I I think that's a good pick. I like that pick. Uh, I think that defense is awful. The we Panthers expected it not to be. And and you really didn't think Derek Carr was going to be worth a darn the whole season, and he tore them apart. 
I know. I give I know. him. I give him. I give him three weeks. Um. All right, let's go to my running back buy. Let's stick with the Chargers and talk about J.K. Dobbins. Projected 13 and a half points. He is also at the Panthers. Sunday, one o'clock kickoff. Uh, J.K. Dobbins had 130 yards and a touchdown last week in his debut for the Chargers. And I think I think we mentioned it as Jake, if J.K. Dobbins can stay healthy, yes. the dude's a star. Yeah. And he's playing again a Panthers team who gave up 85 yards and a touchdown to Alvin Kamara last week. So give me uh, give me a buy on J.K. Dobbins. Bill, what say you buy uh, fact crap on J.K. Dobbins? I'm going to say fact on that one. You're picking him against the one of the worst defenses in the NFL. This is not fair, Ryan. We're, you got to shock us on this one. Listen, low-hanging fruit, man. If you remember anything fruit. about last year, I'm taking the low-hanging <laughs> fruit, dude. All right, let's go to wide receiver that I'm buying, and it's a, it's a rookie, Xavier Worthy. He's projected 11.9 points this week. He is home against the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, last week, he had two total touchdowns. Uh, he took an end around to the house that looked like he was running while everybody else was walking. He uh, makes Z- fast people <laughs> look not fast. Yeah, that's, that's a great That's line. your saying. I was trying to softball that one to you. Yeah, it's, it's well, it's from uh, it's from the longest yard, the movie with Adam Sandler, when they talked about uh, Megat played by Nelly, uh, is that he makes fast people look not fast. Um, of course, all of a sudden now I can't find. Uh, what what the team that he's playing for gave up last week? Um, oh, he's playing I, against he's playing against Cincinnati, and they gave I know up he's the, the second Bengals. lowest uh, fantasy points against wide receivers. They, yeah, you're right. Um, but I, I, but I granted, they did me, play the wide receiver list, New England Patriots. That's kind of my point, and the fact that if he, as long as he touches the ball. He is gonna. He is gonna at least come close to finding the end zone, and eleven point nine is is a pretty low low projection here, considering that he found the end zone twice in his debut. Bill, what say you? Factor crap of Xavier Worthy exceeding eleven point nine points. I hate this one, and I I don't want to call it factor crap. I hate this one. This one's impossible. This is like the the money line on this guy. Like I, I feel like he's right there. Um. Man, see, that's the thing. He becomes the second option there, or well, third option, I guess, with Rasheed Rice having a good game. We told somebody this last week not to pick Rasheed Rice, and then he went and played really well. Uh, they're trying to find him all over the field. I'm going to go crap on this one. I don't I don't think Worthy does it again this week. I, I don't think so. All right, let's move over to tight end, and you'll see a little pattern with my tight end buy and sell this week, and I'm buying in Isaiah Likely. The number two supposedly tight end in Baltimore is projected 11.9 points this week. I'm I'm sorry, 8.9 points this week. I realized that I misspelled loss in Las Vegas, so I had to update the graphic real quick. Projected 8.9 points, but Xavier, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah Likely was the more talented, more athletic. He was the better tight end for the Baltimore Ravens in week one. And now they get the Raiders. I'm trying to find it. Who are middle of the pack? Gave up the 22nd. 17th. I've got the 17th as far as as how many points. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I've got the weird league where it's non PPR. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and again, and we'll we'll talk about it in cells here. But Bill Isaiah likely last week scored in a PPR scoring 26.1 points, nine catches on 12 targets. For 111 yards and a score, a uh, uh, factor crap buying Isaiah Likely here in week two. I'm going to say crap on this one too, Ryan. I don't think he's very likely to get this number again. But um, shh, that's funny. I like it. All right. I well, we'll, I don't we'll, feel it. That's too much for one guy. And it, law of averages. We'll we'll talk more about the tight end situation in Baltimore and the cells as foreshadowing goes. Let's talk about let's let's go ahead and get into cells. And my quarterback that I'm selling this week is Brock Purdy. He is projected 21.2 points playing the Minnesota Vikings one o'clock on Sunday. Um, unfortunately, the Vikings, again, playing a really bad New York Giants team last week, are currently <laughs> the ranked number one against the quarterback in fantasy football. They played um, Daniel Jones. You and I would be ranked number one against the quarterback against Daniel Jones. We yeah, picked him off but at least it, twice. If you look at Purdy from week one, he played the Jets, who have a decent a decent defense. He threw for 231 yards, but he had no touchdowns. 
He, yeah. he accounted for no touchdowns of the, against the Jets on Monday Night Football, which is why yes. I'm selling Brock Purdy. Bill, what say you? Factor crap selling Brock Purdy. Crap. Best best quarterback in the league last year, quarterback rating wise. Um, Purdy, the, Purdy, he finds the end zone this week. Like, listen, law of averages, Ryan. If you're not going to find it last week, you're going to find it this week. It's, it's got to come up. So I think Purdy, and is he getting McCaffrey back? If McCaffrey's back in, they'll throw some screens. He'll, he'll get some points. So I, I think Purdy beats it. All right, let's go to my running back, Sal, and his Brees Hall, running wow. back from New York Jets. He is the highest projected point total in ESPN fantasy this week, projected 22.6 points. He is taking on the Tennessee Titans, who, again, last week were playing uh, – Pittsburgh. Playing, we're playing – No, I'm sorry, the Bears. The Bears, Pittsburgh. sorry, it's Bears, yeah. Played the, the Bears, and the Bears did not run well. Uh, DeAndre Bears. Swift had a – disappearing oh act in that game. <laughs> um, and so they, they're giving up the second fewest points to running backs. Uh, and Brees Hall on Monday – now, now despite that, Brees Hall did score a touchdown on Monday Night Football against the Niners, but he only had 18.3 points uh, carrying for 54 yards with that score, uh, which I – listen, he could get 20 points, and it still qualifies for my my sell segment here. Bill, what say you factor crap? Right, uh, Brees Hall exceeds that 22.6 fantasy points. Or falls under. Does not. This is a sell. So he's not he going to exceed. So I'm going to say yeah. fact on this one, Ryan. You said that the first thing you said was that they, he is the uh, projected highest running back. I don't think that he warrants that. So I'm going to have to go with a fact that do not play or do not expect Brees Hall to score that much this week. All right. Let's go over to the wide receiver. And uh, this, this hurts guy. me. This hurts me because I do like this guy. I drafted him. I got him super late in my work league. Like, I'm talking like eight or ninth round. I got Michael Pittman Jr. from the Indianapolis Colts. He is projected 14.8 points. They're going on the road to play the Green Bay Packers. Um, listen, my my selling on Michael Pittman Jr. has nothing more to do with the fact than, than the fact that Anthony Richardson, uh, despite making some pretty, pretty fen- phenomenal plays, uh, he got he got lit up on one pass this past weekend and was still able to get the ball off and, and complete it. But he also overthrew a, a, and an I or Adonai Mitchell a couple times in this game. It it feels like the other receivers not named Michael Pittman uh, seem to be the beneficiary for Anthony Richardson's quarterback play, and which is why I'm selling Michael Pittman this week. Bill, what say you? Uh, selling Michael Pittman and his 14.8 fantasy points. I'm going with crap on this one, Ryan. I, I don't think the uh, Green Bay Packers have a great pass defense. They gave up some some points last week. Uh, and also, they have no offense this week with Malik Willis as their starting quarterback. So this is going to be a lot of Indianapolis opportunity. To, well, it's going to be a lot of opportunities for Indianapolis to score points. And I, I love Michael Pittman. I think he's much better than he was last week. Crap. All right. Uh, and let's go over to tight end. I bought in on Isaiah Likely, which has to mean this is crazy. I'm selling on this Mark crazy. Andrews. He's, pro- he's projected 11.2 points. He's home against the Raiders. Uh, and I misspelled it on that one, too, because <laughs> your boy was not an English major. And he's um, in projected, a hurry. projected. I was in a hurry. You're, you're right. Projected 11.2 fantasy points. Uh, I think last week showed that despite... Mark Andrews being tight end one. He had two targets, two catches, 14 yards in week one. Um, I Like I said, I think Mark Andrews has lost a step. I sold him a lot last season. And with the emergence of Isaiah Likely and his ability to look like Antonio Gates out there last week. Oh, man. Um, I, I like Isaiah Likely more than I like Mark Andrews, not just this week, but going forward, which is why I sold on Mark Andrews. Bill, I'm guessing you're going to call this crap on Mark Andrews as well. No, I'm actually going to call this one a fact, just for the mere fact that uh, there's that that is a two tight end system now, and I think that's why I crapped on Likely, and I'm going to fact on this one. I don't think either one of them are going to do very well, uh, but yeah, I think I, right, I, I think it's interesting that you pick the same <laughs> the same team. That's awesome. Look at look at oh, it's low hanging fruit everywhere. That might that might be a first for me to pick tight ends on the same team to buy and sell. I'll say this: um, there are a lot of sad people that drafted Mark Andrews pretty high, thinking he was going to be a really nice pick at tight end, and he is looking like he's not going to spend a lot of time catching footballs. Unfortunately, yeah. so far, but it's only week one, Ryan. It's only week one. 
Yep, that's that's bullies, buys, and sells, and banker bills factor crap again. Five and three to four and four on the season. But let's get into it. We've got week uh, podcast pick them week two, and if you're paying attention to the last two weeks, Bill had a perfect week last week. I wish I had like 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 a celebration uh, uh, music or something on here. I've never done um, that. I've never Bill done went, perfect. Bill went a perfect five and zero oh last week that improves his record on the season to six and four. Uh, <laughs> That's, you were so bad side. the week before that now you're barely over 500. Yep. Being perfect. Uh, but after after your guy, Bully Rye, went three and two, Bill passed me on the season uh, with a perfect week as Bill, Banker Bill sits at six and four, and your guy, Bully Rye, is now at five and five. So let's go ahead and get into the podcast pick them week two. Let's start off with a Friday night college football game is the number 20 Arizona Wildcats go take on the Kansas State Wildcats. Um, the number 14 team in the country, Kansas State, a seven and a half point favorite. This is a Friday night, eight o'clock kickoff on Fox. Um, I know I, again, my wrestling friend fans who watch the show may may recognize the fact that this will be the first Friday in six years that the WWE SmackDown will not be housed on Fox as it moved to USA, which opened up for this college football game to be played uh, here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. In Manhattan, Kansas, Bill, what say you? Kansas State seven and a half point home favorite over Arizona. Uh, I'm going to take Arizona to cover just because it's a big spread, and Kansas State did not look great last week. I like Listen, Arizona's quarterback. I like Arizona's quarterback. He's a good player. He's only a sophomore. Uh, listen, I, I, I know I kind of poo pooed on Kansas State earlier in the show. They were looking ahead. Old- I think they were looking ahead, and I think they're going to be ready for this game. I got Kansas State by 10. Give me Kansas State over Arizona to cover this this big spread. Uh, Friday Night Lights in college football over there. Are they in the, Yeah, I guess that's the Big 12. Where's Arizona at? Is Arizona? I think they're Big 12 also now, aren't they? They might be. It might be a Big 12 showdown. I think that's the thing is we don't know because everything changed. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to look it up real quick. While, go ahead. Go, we're... go to the next one. I'll look it up. Yeah. All right. So the next game uh, is the only reason we're picking this game is not because it Big was 12. a homer pick. Uh, they're they're both in the Big Twelve. Okay. Uh, number sixteen LSU, a seven point road favorite, uh, traveling to South Carolina, Saturday noon kickoff on ABC at Williams Bryce Stadium. The only reason that I'm picking this game is because two weeks ago, if if you had put these two teams against each other, um, LSU would have probably been a fourteen point favorite. And to start this week off, South Carolina was given a 49% chance on ESPN to knock off LSU, which is why we're picking the game. I think South Carolina's defense keeps them into this game, but I've got LSU winning. Um, I, listen, I the optimist in me wants to take uh, wants to wants to take South Carolina to win outright. Um, but the, the realism me thinks that LSU could probably win this by 21 points. Give me South Carolina to cover just because I want them to let me down one more time. Bill, what say you LSU seven point road favorite on the road, college game day in town, noon kickoff at Willie B. Uh, who do you got? LSU, South Carolina. See, I, I think if this were a, 7 p.m. kickoff or a 7.30 p.m. kickoff, I would feel different about this game. We watched South Carolina actually dismantle a really good Tennessee football team a couple years ago uh, in the dark. Uh, But with a 12 noon kickoff, I'm just not feeling it. I think LSU can cover seven points. All righty, let's move into the NFL as Thursday night football kicks off on Amazon Prime as the Buffalo Bills travel to the Miami Dolphins, a playoff rematch from last season, but this time they're on the road. Miami Dolphins, it started off, I believe, a a one-and-a-half point spread. Now the Dolphins, a a two-and-a-half point favorite at home against the Bills. Uh, Bill, it's your Dolphins. I'm going to let you pick first. You got Bills at Dolphins. Well, Ryan, until you beat the man, you are not the man. Yes, sir. And right now, the Miami Dolphins do not sit as the man in the AFC East. This is their opportunity to show that they can be the man. But at two and a half, it's not enough for me. I'm going to take the Bills. 
uh, the phrase that you're trying to say was said by the great Ric Flair, and that is to be the man. Woo! You got to beat the man. And I think the Miami Dolphins are the man. I think mm. that situation with Tyreek Hill pregame had a lot to do with the morale of the team. And I think they finally were able to get their wits about them in the second half of that game. Um, and so I think they, they went on Thursday night football pretty handedly. I'm going to give it seven to 14 point win. Again, the bills for an all t- intents and purposes very well easily could have lost to the Arizona Cardinals last week. True. Um, and so give me the dolphins to win over on Thursday night football, a couple of Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon kickoffs, one o'clock kickoff here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who looked very impressive, uh, last week in their win, uh, who did they play last weekend against the, the Washington Commanders? Uh, it's funny because the Cleveland Browns fans called in the radio stations to give quarterback ratings for Baker Mayfield versus Deshaun Watson, considering that, you know, everything that went down with Baker Mayfield. And it seems like it seems like Baker Mayfield is, it had a career resurgence after after he left, Cle- left Cleveland, which uh, is not surprising. Uh, they traveled to Detroit to take on the Lions, who needed all of overtime. I say all of overtime. They they needed they, they needed a, a game tying field goal by by newcomer Jake Bates to take it to overtime. Hey, Ryan. and would win. What's up in the NFL? When a team wins, it is all of overtime. Okay, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay, they didn't need the full ten minute overtime. They were able to complete the game before the ten minutes. Um, Detroit Lions a seven point home favorite against the Bucks, a one o'clock game on Fox. I don't know if it's a regional Fox game because the Panthers are playing on CBS. So this may be the feature game. Um, but Bill, I listen, I think the Lions had the jitters. I they the the Rams were able to 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 contain both Sam Laporta and Amon Ross St. Brown. But the Lions welcomed one Jamison Williams to the party this past week as he looked all like the wide receiver that he was billed to be out of college. Um, you had Jameer Gibbs that looked good in this game. The ball was put in the hands uh, in the, against the Rams. The ball was put in the hands anyway. of David Montgomery. I think that the Lions are just too much for the Bucks to handle. Give me the Lions to cover the seven-point spread. Bill, what say you? Yeah, you know, Homer, that pick so hard. So hard. I am. Remember, they have to play Baker freaking mayfield this week the dude is out of his mind it is hilarious what happened to the brown I, i've seen multiple memes this week about baker mayfield becoming a better quarterback than the deshaun watson is the most brown thing to happen to the browns ever uh yep. that's hilarious right baker mayfield fantastic yeah. anyway it doesn't matter lions kick the crap out of them lions are a better team get jameer gibbs the ball please that man is so much more electric than david montgomery it's not even funny i don't understand why they're still running the t- i mean i get it he needs to play some but they started montgomery this week and i'm thinking what do you as soon as jameer gibbs gets the ball it's a different game matthew Mont- Stafford yeah, but- last week the lions are better than that monty put the put the team on his back in overtime and scored. I didn't watch overtime because but... some people have to go to bed to work in the morning when they don't care about the two teams that are playing. Yeah, I just like the fact that you hit me with the Pat McAfee where he does the Georgia Georgia rant and he says, "Give me Alabama to break their hearts." That's what he just did. <laughs> Baker Mayfield's playing out of his mind. He's doing awesome. Give me the Lions to beat the crap out of the Bucks. What you just did. All right, the last game that we're picking this weekend, the New Orleans Saints, who had just decimated the terrible Carolina Panthers. They're traveling a little farther west. Uh, to take on the Dallas Cowboys, six and a half point home favorite. Uh, that is also a Sunday, o'clock, Sunday one o'clock kickoff game on Fox. If you're in the Carolinas, that may be the game that you see at one o'clock. Bill, um, what say you, Cowboys hosting the Saints at just under a touchdown favorite? Well, Saints had a good game last week against a terrible Carolina Panthers team. So we can't, we, do we know anything really about the Saints? I don't think so. Cowboys went into Cleveland, be what we thought would have been a pretty decent Cleveland team. And I'm going to keep beating this drum. Dak Prescott, a much better quarterback than people give him credit for, and now the highest paid football player in the NFL. I think the Cowboys cover this big spread, six and a half. Yeah, the Cowboys make Derek Carr look like what I expected Derek Carr to look like preseason. Uh, the Cowboys win this game pretty big. Um, you got, uh, I think for the most part, they're healthy. Uh, at the, for the most part, everybody on the Cowboys roster has now been paid up. You know, <laughs> anyway, that matters. So, so uh, give me the Cowboys to take out the Saints at home over that seven point spread. 
Uh, Bill, I would say we can do overtime, but we're already 20 minutes late. So let's just yeah. go ahead in the show. Anything you want to say before we sign off? No, go, I'm look, I'm wearing a throwback this week. Uh, this old damn Reno Jersey actually went from when I was, a, I guess a child. I don't know. Like I was high school or whatever. Yeah. I've had that Jersey this long. Right. Uh, and never actually dried it. So it's still got the numbers on it. Cause I'm one of those smart guys. It doesn't dry my silk screen numbers. Uh, but throwbacks dolphins are gonna be wearing them on Thursday. I know I picked the bills. That's just so I make myself feel better about losing. Go dolphins. All righty. Uh, if you want to follow the show on social media, go over to facebook.com slash tap outs and touchdowns where, where we are normally live every Wednesday on X at tap outs and TDs, despite the fact that X is a fledgling social media platform. Um, and they're not doing all that well. I, I don't have a, a threads page for the podcast, but you can go over to YouTube at tap outs and touchdowns. You can catch those shows live on YouTube. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Ryan Frick comedy um, announcement coming within the next few weeks. I uh, have been softly booked on a show here in the upstate in Malden for a few weeks from now. And I will be uh, giving you more details about that when those, um, when, when those details are more uh, short up, but until then, thanks everybody who watched. Sorry, we weren't live tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed the show, please, wherever it is that you are watching the show or listening to the show. Leave a comment. Let us know how you how you how you felt about the show. Um, we can always talk about it. We'll be able to respond on social media since we won't be live. We'll actually be able to get uh, get what's going on on our phones. So even though you didn't get to be a part of the conversation live with us tonight, please comment along as you're watching this um, or, or comment after the fact to let us know what you felt about the show and and how you feel about our picks and all that stuff. Uh, we will be back next week. More than likely, we will be live again next week. There is a wrestling show coming. I know I've been promising it for months, um, but there is a wrestling show coming. We will be coming. Uh, special thanks once again to Southern Distillery, uh, Southern Distill Distilling Company of Statesville, North Carolina, for for the uh, the uh, what am I trying to say? The experience that Shannon and I had uh, last weekend—a phenomenal time. If you're ever in the, in the Statesville, North Carolina area, please go check it out. Um, otherwise, we will say see you next week for Banker Bill. It's your guy, Bully Rye, and we'll see you next time right here on Tap House and Touchdowns.